What's up guys, it's Coop c t Designs again. Um, changing up the setup, trying something a little bit different. So let's see how the, the audio and everything does on this one. So, let's get right into this. If you guys haven't heard, there is, or there are two different companies this year that announced that they were going to be putting so-called personalized um, smart guns on the U.S. market. So, here's the design for this one. Personalized smart guns. And before they even announce that, here we go with another bill. Um, February 11th. Yeah, we're stuck on February 11th. And we're stuck with... Carolyn Maloney of New York because she is insane and had all sorts of bills she wanted to try to push through. So this is what, one, two, three. This is like four bills she pushed through um, on February 11th. Uh, yeah, she just won't stop. Again, this one was referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Um, I believe, I, I can't remember if she's on the Judiciary or not. Let's get down. Uh, okay, a bill. To provide for the development and use of technology for personalized handguns to require that all handgun manufa all handguns manufactured or sold or imported into the United States um, incorporate such technology and for other purposes. I love how they always throw that for other purposes. So let's get into this. The short title act may be cited as the Handgun Trigger Safety Act of 2021. Section two, findings. <clears throat> Congress finds as follows. It is in the interest of the United States to protect its citizens from handgun violence and accidental firearms deaths. There are no such thing, there is no such thing as handgun violence. Same reason we don't say knife violence, or car violence, or baseball bat violence, or hand violence. Uh, 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 that's that's going to make my head hurt even more. Okay. Personalized handguns would prevent unauthorized users, whether children, criminals, or others, um, from misusing the weapon. They're also going to keep you from using the weapon. All right. All right, look, get this. Your cell phone, something you carry around every single day, if you're like any other human being on this planet, how many times does that thing malfunction and just go crazy? How many times have you, if you work out in a field like I do, where your hands are dirty, your fingerprint won't read, um, it's cold outside, you're wearing gloves, you can't hit the, the buttons on to actually text. If it's RF technology, that's very easily defeated. It's just, it's, just, it's, it's insane. Um, personal, personalized handguns would allow authorized users to continue to lawfully own and use their handguns more safely. Um, sorry, these handguns are only a danger when they are used by someone in a dangerous manner. Thieves are not going to care. And if it's... You build so much technology into something like a firearm that is... I mean, you have malfunctions anyway with a normal firearm. Even if it's in perfect working order, there can be malfunctions. Now you want to add on a whole other layer of malfunction in this thing okay um finding number four from 2011 to 2015 according to the centers for disease control an average of 544 americans died in firearms accidents each year they don't mention the amount of defensive gun uses per year which are just a year are from I think the lowest number I've heard was 300,000 and up to 2 million defensive gun uses a year. 
for the number of guns we have in the United States, 544 accidental deaths, whereas that is horrible, is extremely low when you're talking about an upwards of 400 million firearms. And let's get into some of their sources. According to research from Every Town for Gun Safety, which is not for gun safety, they are for banning guns. An unintentional shooting involving a child happens every 34 hours in the United States. That's an absolute BS statistic. Um, and while we're talking about children having accidents with things, um, why don't they mention the number of children that die in tubs and buckets and toilets every year? I don't see them wanting to run around and ban five-gallon buckets. According to the National Crime Victimization Survey, almost 350,000 incidents of a firearm theft from a private citizen occurs every year. Then why don't we go find the criminals doing that and put them in jail? They're already breaking multiple laws getting to the firearm. Quit trying to blame firearms owners or firearms themselves. I guarantee you, I could leave this or this. Or this. Or this. Or this. I guarantee you, I could leave them unattended in the middle of a crowded park. And as long as no one acted, grabbed it, and used it, it would not hurt a single soul. All right. So that's a, the National Crime Victimization Service. That's another way that they can try to inflate numbers. Now, they've already used every town for gun safety, so let's go to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, another supposed to be law enforcement group that mainly spends their time trampling on people's rights. 24 law enforcement officers were killed with their own weapons between 06 and 2015. That sounds like a training issue to me. And if you had, let's put it this way, if you had RFID technology built into these handguns, do you not think criminals would find a way, and they can already do it, where they can jam that technology so that when a cop gets out of the car, his gun is useless? Oh, these people are brainless. We're going to be like screaming at my gun. Hey, Siri. Or where'd the thing go for the RFID? I had to take it off because I was at work. Now my gun's a freaking paperweight. Or gee, what's the code? What's the code? My hands are slippery. Oh, fucking people are idiots. Oh, it makes my brain hurt. All right. Uh... <laughs> Finding number eight. Again, let's go back to this. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, almost half of all murders in the United States in 2015 were committed with handguns. Uh, yeah. Again, what is your point? Take the people who are committing murders with handguns and put them in a place where they are in jail and they can no longer commit murders. That's why we have laws against murder. See, they're already breaking the laws against murder. Do you honestly think having another law on top of murder that they are suddenly going to be like, oh shit, I can't do that anymore. No, you're a moron. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. So title one. Technology for personalized handgun grants. So not only are they going to try to force this onto the citizens of the United States, but they're going to make you pay for it with your tax dollars. Because whenever the government does a grant, the government doesn't have money. They have your money. What are we doing? No. Well, I'll go draw on your stuff, Bubba. You know it won't write on that. Sorry, my son's walking around with his colored pencils. <laughs> um, let's see. Authorized user. 
And this is where they get into um, terms and definitions. So they don't even list it in this, but they would actually, if they're putting this into law, or here, they actually do say it. They have to get into 921, which is your section for definitions governing firearms. That's why I argue with people that words matter because these are legal terms. Um, the term authorized user with respect to a firearm means the lawful owner of the firearm and any individual who is authorized by the lawful owner of the firearm to use the firearm and authorized under law of the state um, where the firearm is being used to carry to own carry or use a firearm in the state um, okay handgun the term handgun has the meaning given um, the term in section 921A, um, paragraph or subparagraph 29 of Title 18, United States Code. This is section 44, as always, governing firearms. Personalized handgun. A personalized handgun means a handgun that enables only the authorized user of the handgun to fire the handgun and is manufactured in such a manner that firing. Um, that the firing restriction described in subparagraph A um, is, a corp is incorporated into the design of the handgun. So yeah, let's take something that is, I mean, they, they run well, no problems, but anybody will tell you eventually stuff happens and they will malfunction. You have to clear jams and stuff like that. Could be a feed issue, could be an ammunition issue, any number of things can happen. Let's make this machine even more complicated. Like criminals are gonna just freaking, oh shit, I can't have that gun, it's gotta be a smart gun. It's gotta be a personalized handgun. Okay, incorporated into the design of the handgun is not, and this, and we'll trip on this in a second, is not sold as an accessory and cannot be readily removed or deactivated. In other words, if you tamper with the device, it's going to disable the handgun. Um, can you about uh, the, the cost of these things? The two companies that are looking at putting out handguns on the market, they're supposed to be personalized handguns. By the way, last time I heard, a, uh, I'd have to find the guy's name, but he's a big Democrat who is uh, pushing for laws like this. He is involved with a company that's going to manufacture these guns. So not like it's in his best interest to vote for crap like this. Um, uh, just, uh, I uh, completely just brained out on that one. No, that's going to the cost. Um, the cost of their standard, their entry level gun was almost $900. So what is that going to do for the person? Um, Okay, I didn't have a whole lot of money at the time when I wanted to change out my carry gun from a full size 1911 to a, more, to a more compact gun. So I bought this. This is a Taurus G2C. A lot of people don't like them. I hate the trigger on it, but um, I can shoot it accurately. It operates fine. I've got quite a few hundred rounds through it. Um, no real issues. Um, I've shot multiple brands of ammunition, all kinds of stuff. I, I, I trust the gun. Um, but this is a very inexpensive handgun. And for someone like me, when I bought this, I didn't have a whole lot of extra cash to throw at stuff. Um, that would price people out of the market if they've got to go get a gun that's almost $900. So, again, you're talking about doing stuff that is only going to affect people who don't have that much more capital to go throw at a eight, nine hundred dollar gun. So they're not allowed to defend themselves. Man, oh man, oh man, these people. Um, 
not sold as accessory, cannot be uh, readily removed or deactivated, which anything technology-wise, criminals are going to find ways to do whatever they want to with it. So, again, you're looking at something that's only going to affect law-abiding people. Um, qualified entity. The term qualified entity means a state or unit of local government, a nonprofit, or for-profit organization or an institution of higher education as defined in section 101 of the Higher Education Act of 1965. Um, and then see here we get into retrofitted personalized handgun. So they say up here they don't want anything after market, but then they come down here to retrofitted personalized handgun the term retrofitted personalized handgun means a handgun fitted with a device that enables only, so this is aftermarket, you dumb shit. Device that only uh, enables only an authorized user of the handgun to fire the handgun and cannot be readily removed or deactivated. Um, there's so many different situations where I, what am I supposed to do? I, I take my gun and I have to program that for everybody that I know could possibly use it. Um, what happens when, much like your phone or anything else, you have some sort of software or hardware glitch and then it's just dead? Oh. Uh, the Attorney General acting through the Director of the National Institute of Justice, referred to this as the Director, shall make grants to qualified entities to develop technology for personalized handguns. So again, they're going to use your tax dollars to fund this stuff. And the only reason they're using your tax dollars to fund it is, is because nobody wants this stuff. If people wanted this stuff, then industry alone, the market, would decide that. Oh. All right. Um, applications. A. Give me that, Goober. He's. He's beating him. Get out of that. So, let's see. Where are we at? Okay, applications. A qualified en entity seeking a grant under this title. Oops. You okay, Wubba? <laughs> oh, my two-year-old just decided to tip the chair over and ride it down. Hey, thanks for that. <laughs> so, Good job, Bubba. Yeah. Uh, it scared the hell out of me for a second. But he wrote it like a champ, and he didn't get hurt, so. Let's see, qualified entity seeking a grant under this title shall submit to the director an application um, at such time and such manner and containing such information <laughs> as the director may reasonably require. Use of funds, use of your tax dollars to develop something that the market absolutely doesn't want. Because government is the answer to everything, right kids? Say it with me. Don't you say that. Don't you say that like you mean Would it. you let me finish my thought, no. woman? What was the what was the line in uh, 1986? Was it um there are really four lights and not five? Oh man, man, oh man. All right, a qualified ent entity uh, that receives grant uh, money under this um, shall use not less than 70% of the amount of the grant to develop technology for personalized handguns may use not more than 20% of the amount of the grant um, to develop technology for retrofitted personalized handguns. So let me get this straight, hold on, hold on. It would be much easier to develop the gun from the ground up to be smart and much harder to figure out a way to retrofit this with one of these devices. But they're gonna throw 70% at the new technology and only 20% when they want all these retrofitted. You, you can't 
You can't make up this level of stupidity. And it's purposely done this way, really and honestly. Just to make things so hard on industry that when they push this through, they effectively eliminate legal firearms. All right, um, and they may use not more than 10% of the amount of the grant for administrative costs associated with the development of technology funded under the title, which means there are going to be a whole lot of leftist organizations that are going to make bank off of this grant. It's a, it's a, a scheme is all it is. <laughs> All right, section 105, um, term renewal. Term, a grant awarded under this title shall be uh, for a term of one year. Renewal, qualified entity receiving a grant under this title may renew the grant by submitting to the director an application for renewal at such time in such matter containing <laughs> such information as the director reasonably requires. And reports, reports to the director, a qualified entity receiving a grant under this title shall submit to the director such reports at such time in such manner. We would like that in triplicate. And containing such information as the director may reasonably require. Uh, how many times have we seen this? Stuff just like this where... The government takes our tax dollars and they give grants to people to do useless research. And people actually end up making millions off of this useless research. Schools waste millions of dollars on useless research. Um, Rand Paul does a, a lot of stuff where he actually calls out all the money that's being wasted on useless research. Um, Neil Bortz, a talk show host I used to listen to years ago, did something all the time about money that was wasted on useless research, like seriously a study to see whether a shrimp can run on a treadmill. No one on this planet gives zero shits if a shrimp can run on a treadmill. Nobody. But our government will throw money at it. There was another one. It was, oh, uh, God, it was a couple of million dollars to, to see how a fly lands on the ceiling. Half of you guys that own cameras and do YouTube stuff literally could have shot that for five bucks. Fly, slow motion, video, fly lands on ceiling. Ta-da! But they spend millions on it. Oh, okay. Reports to Congress. Each year, the director shall submit to Congress a report that nobody's going to read that contains a summary of the information submitted to the director under subsection A during the previous year. These people don't read the bills that they are trying to pass, much less a report on it. Yeah, right. Uh, I guarantee you half of them up there couldn't pass a basic literary, literacy test any damn way. Here's my redneck ass reading. They're actually reading their bills. And actually going into the law, editing the law the way their bill would do it. And you know damn well they ain't doing this. How can she put out, this is like her fifth bill just in one day they submitted. All right, let's get into this. Uh, sections uh, 107, regulations. The director may promulgate um, such guidelines, rules, regulations, and procedures as may be necessary to carry out this title. Authorization of appropriations. Here it is. Um, there is authorized to be a, um, appropriated to carry out this title Two million dollars for each of the first two physical years beginning after the date of enactment of this act. Now, the reason they state it that way is, is because if it doesn't make it through this year, they are going to push it through the next year and the next year and the next year. That's why they didn't say that this money will be used from 2021 to 2022 to 2023. No. There's authorized to be appropriated of this title $2 million for each of the first two physical years beginning after the date of enactment of this act. 
they're going to keep pushing it. Uh, definitions in this title. Antique firearm. Firearm, handgun. The term antique firearm, firearm, and handgun have the meaning given to those in section 921 of 18 U.S. Code. We've been through that. That's all terms and definition or definitions. Authorized user, the term authorized user with respect to the firearm means the lawful owner, uh, any individual who is authorized by the lawful owner, um, authorized under law uh, to be able to own the firearm. Commission, the term commission means the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Where have we heard that today already? Uh, let me see. That was uh, da, 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 public health, fire safety, private safety. Uh, that was HB 880, where they want to take firearms and they actually want to put those under the Consumer Product Safety Act so that the Consumer Product Safety Board can control how these weapons actually function. And it would make gun manufacturers and retailers a hell of a lot easier to sue. Not for producing a defective product, but this is using a gang shooting, then other people can run out and, and sue, in this case, Paul Brady, or they can sue, I can't remember what slides on the gun, they can sue them, or it looks like a Glock, so they can go out and sue Glock. They're trying to put so much pressure on these gun companies through the courts and monetarily to basically shut them down and put them out of business. <sighs> okay. Um, and we already went through the stuff for the product safety shit earlier today. Yeah, this is getting maddening. Okay, manufactured and manufacturer, the term manufactured and manufacturer have the same meaning given to the Consumer Product Safety Board. So, yes, they're trying to push this all under the Consumer Product Board. Which, just to give you a for instance on this, um, a couple of years ago, there was a company that made fenders and stuff for four-wheelers. Made them very inexpensively. But they had a very small trace amount of lead in these fenders, so the Consumer Product Board shut them down and would not allow them to bring these fenders in. Like someone was going to be sitting there chewing the fenders on the four-wheeler and getting lead poisoning. But that was done through the Consumer Product Safety Board. Uh, just, oh. Um, it, uh, it just, oh, it's just goofy. Um, personalized handgun, personalized handgun, and they're going back through the definitions. Handgun means it enables only an authorized user of the handgun to fire the handgun and is manufactured in such a manner that firing, that the fire restriction described in subparagraph A, all the way back up at the top of this, is incorporated into the design of the handgun, is not sold as an accessory, and cannot be readily removed or deactivated. And then they go in through the retrofitted handgun, again, retrofitted personalized handgun. And uh, the reason I'm still reading this, because uh, you're going to see something here in just a minute that will actually just make you want to scream even further. All right, enables on the authorized user, cannot be readily removed or deactivated. States and United States, the term states and the United States got uh, given that meaning, same thing. Uh, Consumer Product Safety Act. To distribute in commerce and uh, distribution in commerce. Again, we're getting to the commerce clause. Um, the terms to distribute in commerce and distribution in commerce have the same meaning as those terms in Section 3 of the Consumer Product Safety Act. Um, prohibition on manufacturing and distribution of handguns that are not personalized handguns. Uh, Manufacturing, um, beginning on the date that is five years after the date of enactment of this act, no person, no person may manufacture in the United States a handgun that is not, per, not a personalized handgun. So you can't even build a handgun at home that does not have this technology in it five years after something like this is enacted. Uh, distribution and commerce. 
um, beginning on the date that is 10 years after the date of the act, enactment of this act, no person may dis, uh, distribute in commerce any handgun that is not a personalized handgun or a retrofitted personalized handgun. So this gun, this 1911, or any of my handguns that obviously are not just going to melt away. I mean, I'm, these, my kids are going to get these guns. Um, or if, and if they wanted to sell them, they wouldn't be able to do that. So what would happen is, is after the date of an act, or 10 years after the date of an enactment on this, if someone died and their family didn't keep those firearms, they would then have to destroy those firearms. They would have to be turned over to the government, state or federal, and those guns would be destroyed. All right. Um, exemptions for antique firearms and military firearms. Um, paragraph one and two shall not apply to an antique firearm, and again, that's in terms and definitions. Um, the manufacturer of a firearm that is sold to the Department of Defense. This is again where I tell you they always carve out their own exceptions for them. So the Department of Defense, um, the federal government, they would all be allowed to have whatever firearms they want. You would be the one stuck with these personalized guns. If these personalized guns were so good, why wouldn't they go to the government? All right, this uh, shall not apply to the sale or distribution of a firearm to the Department of Defense. Um, enforcement by Consumer Product Safety Commission. Okay, treatment of a violation, um, notwithstanding Section 3A, 5E on the Consumer Product Safety Act, a violation of subsection A or any rule promulgated by the commission pursuant to paragraph 4 shall be treated as a violation of section 19A1 of the Consumer Product Safety Act. Uh, treatment of consumer product safety standards notwithstanding section 3, yada, yada, yada. The commission, or uh, the Consumer Product Safety Act Subsection A and any rule promulgated pursuant to paragraph 4 shall be considered consumer product safety rules. In other words, they want to control the firearms, how these handguns are made, what features they can have. And they, these are the people that screwed up a five gallon gas can. What do you think they're going to do to something with moving parts? You literally, it's an, almost impossible to find a decent gas can these days because they, they have just overcomplicated it. It's a container with a spout that holds gasoline. That's all it has to do. That's its only purpose in life. And they put these features on there that absolutely make these things unusable. Um, they shut... Uh, when was it? Uh, it wasn't too long back. They shut down an entire plant that made gas cans. But they put so many rules and restrictions on the way these gas cans could be um, constructed. This was an American company. They put so many restrictions on them, they could not produce those gas cans and remain profitable. So a couple hundred people lost their jobs because these dickheads. And you want to put them in charge or in a position to oversee firearms. Well, I mean, what do you think is going to happen to that? Powers of the Commission. In general, the Commission shall enforce this section in the same manner, by the same means, and with the same juris jurisdiction, powers, and duties, as though all applicable terms and provisions of the Consumer Product Safety Act were incorporated into and made a part of this section. That's a big long way of saying they're going to let this other alphabet agency completely screw the firearms industry. And they're going to do it through regulation, not through passing actual targeted laws. Privileges and immunities. 
Any person who violates this section shall be subject to the penalties and entitled to the privileges and immunities provided in the Consumer Product Safety Act. Regulations. The commission and or the commission in consultation with the Attorney General and the Director of the National Institute of Justice may promulgate such rules as the commission considers appropriate to carry out this section. So again, regulation enforcement by states in general. In any case in which the Attorney General of a state has reason to believe that the interest of the residents of the state has been or is threatened or adversely affected by the, uh, by the engagement of any person in the practice that violates Section A, the Attorney General of the state, as, uh, and that's a freaking legal term, I have to look it up, basically saying he can bring civil action on behalf of the residents of the state in an appropriate district court. So, people are getting shot with Glocks. The Attorney General can sue Glock on behalf of the so-called injured parties in his state. Again, trying to put these companies out of business, or at least make it to where they won't produce any of these handguns. And in some cases, com or companies that are bringing in or importing firearms just won't import them. All right. Now, they can bring the suit to enjoin further violations of sub 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 such subsection um, to compel compliance with a subsection to obtain damages, restitution, and other compensation on behalf of such residents. So the AG of a place like, I don't know, Chicago can just start suing gun manufacturers and importers and sellers. Not like it's going to stop any shootings, but they'll bankrupt the companies. Um, to such civil pen penalties and other relief as the court considers appropriate. And if you don't believe these courts will find appropriate settlements for millions of dollars, uh, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. We're just, we're, did you eat paint chips as a child? Were they all lead paint chips? Did you... All right, Rights of Consumer Product um, Commission. A notice to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. In general, except as provided in Clause III, the Attorney General of the state shall notify the commission in writing that the Attorney General intends to bring civil action under Paragraph 1, not less than 10 days before initiating the civil action. All right. Um, Section I contents, the notification required by the clause one I with respect to civil action shall include a copy of the complaint to be filed to initiate civil action. Exception, um, if it is not feasible for the attorney general of a state to provide the notification required by the clause before initiating civil action under paragraph one, the attorney general shall notify the commission immediately upon instituting civil action. So, in other words, all he has to do after the, they say that little 10-day period, but what it will end up being is the Attorney General just say, hey, uh, we're suing these people. Um, there's your notification. Intervention by computer, Consumer Product Safety Commission. The Commission may intervene in any civil action brought by the Attorney General of a state under paragraph 1 upon intervening, um, be heard on all matters arising in the civil action and file petitions for appeal of a decision in the civil action. So if a court decided against the AGs suing the gun companies, um, the Consumer Product, Product Agency can file a, or a petition um, to appeal that decision. Investigatory powers. Nothing in this subsection may be construed to prevent the Attorney General of a state from exercising the powers conferred on the Attorney General by the laws of the state to conduct investigations, administer oaths or affirmations, or to compel the attendance of witnesses or the production of documents under or, or other evidence. 
So the, the attorney general can go in, they can subpoena these companies, they can subpoena documents from these companies. They can wrap them up in so much legal red tape that they can't even operate. Prevent or uh, preemptive action, actions by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. If the commission institutes a civil action or an administrative action with respect to a violation of subsection B, the attorney, the attorney general of a state may not, during the pendency of such action, bring a civil action under paragraph one against any defendant named in the complaint of the commission for the violation with respect with uh, the commission instituted such action. Venue service of process. Venue. Any action brought under paragraph one may be brought in the District Court of the United States that meets applicable requirements relating to venue under section 1391, Title 28, United States Code, or another court of complement, competent jurisdiction. Service of process. In an action brought under paragraph one, process may be served in any district which the defendant is an inhabitant or may be found. Actions by other state officials. In general, in addition to civil actions brought by the attorney general under paragraphs one, any other officer of a state who is authorized by the state to do so may bring civil action under paragraph one, subject to the same requirements and limitations under this. So if your AG doesn't want to sue these people, someone else in his office could, or another agent of the state could actually bring suit. This is all about keeping these companies so tied up in courts and spending so much money in courts to defend themselves that there's no way they can make a profit. The process is the punishment here. Uh, and there's some other stuff. Hang with me if you're still here. There's some other stuff you need to see in this. All right, savings provision. Nothing in subsection may be construed to prohibit an authorized official of a state from initiating or continuing any proceeding in a court of the state for a violation of any civil or criminal law of the state. So even if one uh, attorney decided to drop it, another one can pick it up. Okay. Now this is this is one place I wanted to get to. So cost of retrofitting. This is another way they want to actually bankrupt these companies. Costs borne by manufacturers upon the request of the owner of a handgun that was manufactured in the United States that is not a personalized handgun or retrofitted personalized handgun, the manufacturer of the handgun shall, that shall there means they have to. That's the, that legal power of that word shall means these gun companies, whether it's Glock or SIG or anybody, they have to take the firearm, they have to retrofit the handgun um, to become a personalized handgun and return the handgun to the owner within a reasonable amount of time and may not request compensation for the retrofit from the owner. That means if I have this gun, I bought it from wherever, Glock, yada, yada, yada. I suddenly want this to be a retrofitted handgun. I send this into Glock. Glock has to retrofit it. That's time, that's labor, that's parts. And then they ship it back to me. That's another cost and a reasonable amount of time. Who's going to define that? And Glock or whoever can't charge any money for that. They have to eat the cost. Oh, man. All right, uh, rulemaking, not later than one year after the date of enactment of this act, the commission, in consultation with the Attorney General and Director of the National Institute of Justice, shall, by regulation, establish the maximum period of time within which a manufacturer 
that receives a request from the owner of the handgun under paragraph one um, shall retrofit and return the handgun to the owner. So the AG and the Justice Department are basically going to tell the manufacturers how much time they have to actually do the retrofit and get it back to the owner. All right, reimbursement from the Department of Justice um, asset forfeiture fund. And I didn't pull this, I should have pulled this up, but I did. Um, Section 524C1, Title 28, United States Code is amended. A, in subparagraph H by striking and at the end, and subparagraph B by striking the period at the end and inserting um, and by inserting after the subparagraph I the following. Payments to the reimburse Payments to reimburse manufacturers of handguns for the cost of retrofitting handguns um, to comply with the requirement under subsection 202D1 of Handgun Trigger Safety Act 2021. Um, relation to state law. Uh, this section shall not be constructed as superseding, altering, or affecting any provision of law of a state except to the extent that such provisions of law is inconsistent with the provisions of this section so your state laws have to match this if not this will over or supersede your state laws oh let's see and this is i talked about or hit on this earlier today this is where this comes up too so not only do they want to put these uh handguns underneath the product consumer product now they want to exempt um, the Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. So section four of the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act is amended in paragraph four, and I should have pulled that up, guys, I'm sorry. Um, by striking the term qualified product <clears throat> means and inserting the following, the term qualified product except as provided in clause two by striking a period at the end by adding at the end does not include a handgun that is manufactured on or after the date five years after enactment of the handgun trigger act so yeah they, they want to strike um all of the normally produced traditional um handguns they want to strike these from the Protection of Lethal, Le Legal Commerce and Arms Act. So even after this act, um, someone using a handgun to, mit to commit a crime, uh, the manufacturers would no longer be protected from liability. Even though it's a properly functioning firearm, it was used in a way that was illegal in the first place, just like taking your car and wrecking it into a group of people. They want to be able to go back and sue the gun companies, again, to bankrupt them. These people know how to play this game. Uh, let's see. Term authorized, respect to the firearm. Uh, lawful fire, yeah, we already went through basically getting into the definitions. Term handgun, uh, personalized handgun, retrofitted handgun, all that. So, this, this thing's an absolute mess. You're talking about five years after this act is done, then the manufacturers can't sell um, normal handguns anymore. Ten years after this act, you personally can't sell normal handguns anymore. And, and there's, there's no way they are going to, like, do a drop-in trigger or something for all firearms like this. Standard steel frame, full-size government model 1911. There's no damn way they're going to be able to put RF technology in this thing to... Pers so called personalize this gun. Alright, guys, so that's that one. Um, and I might play around with another video, and I'm just going to have a little bit more fun with it in a little bit. We're going to get them to actually make fun of.
Democrats while they're in hearings and actually talking, which is always fun for me anyway. So anyway, guys, y'all be cool. I'm out. Later. You did not wait. <laughs>